I'm Daz, and this week's discussion is on the history of Skid Row and understanding homelessness in the United States. We'll get into it after a message from our sponsor. Friends, as the world gets more dangerous with every passing day, it's time to make sure your family is prepared for severe food shortages ahead. That's why My Patriot Supply is going the extra mile to make the emergency food as affordable as possible. How? They're taking $250 off their three-month emergency food kit, which is the minimum your family should have. This kit provides delicious, easy-to-make breakfasts, lunches, dinners, drinks, and snacks for one person for three solid months. Get one for each member of your family while you're able to save $250 during this timely sale, which ends soon. Remember, My Patriot Supply is the nation's largest preparedness company with millions of families already protected. These three-month food kits are in stock and ready to go. Your order ships fast and free and arrives in unmarked boxes for your privacy. Go to preparewithdaz.com. Those who know what's coming are using today to prepare are you. Preparewithdaz.com. I'm going to share this article about the timeline of Skid Row and then give my commentary. You can find it linked in the description box below. Skid Row is an area of approximately 50 square blocks located just east of downtown Los Angeles, also known as Central City East. The area has a long-standing history of a residential neighborhood for those with the least. Since the early 20th century, many of the city's working poor, unemployed, disabled, and otherwise marginalized residents have, have found homes in the single-room occupancy hotels located throughout the relatively small neighborhood. But between 1950 and 2000, 15,000 residential hotel apartments, the most affordable housing in Los Angeles, were destroyed, threatening Skid Row's residential community and forcing thousands of people onto the city's shelters and sidewalks. In 1989, community activists and business leaders of Los Angeles downtown community responded to the alarming disappearance of affordable, permanent housing by coming together to create Skid Row Housing Trust. The trust swiftly mobilizes private equity through low-income tax credits, public finance, and conventional debt to salvage hundreds of housing apartments that would have been otherwise lost. Dilapidated hotels were renovated and transformed into safe, attractive, and affordable permanent housing in which low-income and formerly homeless men and women could live and thrive. Over the past 25 years, the trust has refined its homes to provide not just housing, but a supportive community as well. The trust has increasingly targeted its homes to long-term homeless and disabled men and women with an emphasis on co-locating housing and services together by providing an integrated approach to the housing, primary health care, mental health treatment, substance, substance abuse treatment, and counseling. The trust provides many of the tools needed to overcome the causes of homelessness combination of beautifully designed, high-quality housing, professional property management, and innovative social services provision has made Skid Row Housing Trust the national leader in ending homelessness. Some of the early history of Skid Row includes the term originated during the construction of the railroads in the mid-19th century. The first railroad construction began in the Pacific Northwest, where tracks made from harvested logs were sent to construction sites along Skid Roads. These roads were also built from logs, and their purpose was to make it much easier to keep the logs rolling along the heavily muddled streets around the sites. The workers who built the railroads were mostly transient immigrant men as the construction look hold business that catered to these men sprang up, usually brothels and taverns for the most part, since the men were far away from their families and homes. Single room occupancy SRO hotels were built to house them. When the men were working, they had money to spend on prostitution, liquor, and hotels, but employment was often seasonal and scarce. When the men were out of work, they wound up drunk, often sleeping in the streets. Alcoholism grew among their population of men. The religious community responded to their needs by opening shelters to house, feed, and and prostatize the men. These neighborhoods were considered seedy, dangerous, and dirty because of the skid roads that were in the center of the neighborhood They became known as the skid roads. Toward the end of 19th century, the rail lines were built in Los Angeles to connect Southern California to the rest of the country. The railroads were constructed in just east of the historic core of Los Angeles, which was the bustling downtown core of the city at the time. As in the other urban areas, the brothels, bars, SRO hotels, and missions developed to serve the men who worked on the railroads and later men who traveled west on the railroads in search of work and opportunity. Since its inception at the end of the 19th century of Los Angeles, Skid Row has been defined by the mix of cheap residential hotels, industry, and religious missions, and the people they serve, ranging from workers to those down on their luck to the poor and disabled. In the 20th century, during the Great Depression of 1930s, 
L.A. Skid Row saw an infusion of men from the rest of the United States heading west in hopes of earning a living often. They wound up on Skid Row where they would find housing, food, and shelter of some kind. The pattern of transient population continued into and past the Depression well into the 1950s and 1960s. But the 1970s saw a dramatic and profound change where once the population had been dominated mostly by men who suffered from alcoholism, the 70s brought Vietnam veterans and heavy drug users in addition to legislation was passed to deinstitutionalize hospitals serving individuals with severe mental illness. Well meaning as this was, the government did not follow through on the community treatment needed to stabilize these individuals outside of the hospitals. With nowhere else to go, many wound up on Skid Row, where services and shelters were the only help available to them. In the 1950s and 1960s, many of the residential hotels fell into despair. The city increased building and safety code enforcement of the residential hotels, and many owners found it cheaper to demolish the hotels rather than comply with work orders. The stock of affordable housing provided throughout the residential hotels were reduced by half during the period, and many residents found themselves unable to afford other housing and were now homeless. These years also saw the deterioration of entire inner cities across the country. Residents with the resources moved out of urban areas and into the suburbs. To address the growing urban blight issue, a war on poverty was declared by President Lyndon B. Johnson, with government funding, a commercial interest in urban revitalization grew. In Los Angeles, the urban revitalization began with a Bunker Hill redevelopment, which also displaced many low-income residents. Business interest in developers expressed concern that Skid Row and the homeless population out of town would hamper economic development opportunities. In the 1970s, Los Angeles Mayor Tom Bradley was facing increasing pressure to address the issue, but it was an ethical and moral dilemma. Displacement of the poor and disabled had also increased homelessness downtown. The city clearly needed a new approach. Mayor Bradley created a special blue ribbon commission charged with coming up with a response to the dilemma. After much study and consideration, the commission recommended the Community Redevelopment Agency, CRA, which collected and managed developer fees to the city and generated tax increment financing to use those fees to care and house the homeless. The commission recommended that the CRA fund residential development in Skid Row to preserve the community for its low-income residents and provide decent housing for them. The recommendation was that all the housing and services for the homeless be centered in the Skid Row neighborhood, where they would both be protected for the pressure of gentrification, but also can concentrate the homeless away from the Bunker Hill and the new financial core of the city so that's a little bit of history and all honesty another thing that really helped create skid row as it is because it painted a accurate picture but they also wanted to make sure when they were developing the city more that they weren't going to affect as they mentioned the booming business so they actually placed lights around the edges of Skid Row when you start to get into other parts of the city that were bright, sort of like jail lights, to deter those on Skid Row from leaving that area. And it reminds me of Kansas City where we have all of our homeless services, for the most part, in a concentrated area. So while you will find people who are begging at corners of areas outside of that region, or you might find an occasional encampment for the most part most of them stay within that area and a lot of cities have their own version of skid row in the united states where they kind of know this area to be the homeless place and people for the most part don't really go into it other than passing by san francisco has a similar issue with howard street and then here up in vancouver there is a street known as hastings street which is filled with homeless tents the idea of containing the homeless which a lot of times comprise disenfranchised groups, those suffering from severe mental illness, substance abuse, those who weren't able to afford housing. This is a growing problem nationwide and then worldwide. As the price of housing continues to go up and inflation, we may see more instances like this and probably why there's more of an emphasis on social services given these issues. I'd like to know your thoughts on skid row being created and how it's ballooned into an issue if you live in the LA area. I especially like to know your thoughts. Even for those of us who don't live in the area, um, what are you seeing in your region for homelessness? Do you feel like your city's doing a good job of curbing it? Or do you think that even with these areas or zones where all the services are there, that it's only enabling the issue? Thank you for tuning in. Take care and God bless.